Hi everyone, I wanted to create a video that would explain the prophecies of Daniel and if you needed to share with someone you could use this as an evangelical message about you know one of the objective verifiable facts about Jesus is that he 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 was prophesied on a specific date and time and um, his death matches it exactly so his death and resurrection match it exactly so let's let's uh, proceed but uh, anyway the the prophet Daniel uh, the traditional dating is he wrote about 530 BC he was living in Babylon at the time he was an honored member of the uh, court of the king uh, he was a magi he was the head of the magi actually at, at a certain point so he was very educated very um, respected he went through this uh, uh, effort of betrayal to have him get killed in the lion's den but it didn't work God intervened and saved his life as you see here in the picture. So let's proceed. What's distinctive about Daniel's prophecy, it's only one of two uh, passages in the original Bible, the Hebrew Bible, or the canon of the Jewish people that had the word Messiah and used in a prophetic sense. The other one is Psalm 2. So uh, this is in Daniel 9, 24 to 27. So that's an important reason why Christians should be concerned about this and be interested in knowing how to explain their faith. Okay, a very interesting thing about the book of Daniel is what triggered the, uh, why did God do this? He, he God was motive, moved by some prayer of Daniel's. So this shows you God is listening and he then intervened to promise a Messiah and then to promise atonement. So, uh, and it specifically was uh, his quotation of Exodus 20 verse 6. So we need to see this. This is the gospel within the Ten Commandments. Ten, there's Ten Commandments and between the first and second you will hear this, these words and this is on the bottom of this slide. I show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 20 verse 6 KJV. So there's your grace, mercy to thousands of them that what? Love me and keep my commandments. A very simple gospel. What happened is Daniel uh, begins his prayer asking for mercy on that basis. So let's read his prayer. And that's very important. Daniel 9, verse 4. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So there it is. That's the Exodus premise of grace and mercy. Jesus in Matthew 19 and Luke 18 um, quotes this Exodus 26 verse, so it's actually very important. And Jesus actually gives the same answer. This is the path to eternal life. He was asked, and behold, and this is uh, Matthew 19, 16 to 19, and behold, one came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why ask me about what's good? When there is who's good? But if you would enter into life, keep, that's tereo, the word for obey, keep the commandments. He says unto him, which? And Jesus said, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, and so on and so on. Continuing to quote the Ten Commandments. So he quoted out of the Ten Commandments its principle of mercy, grace, and then gave the, the uh, actual laws, started quoting them. And that's the path of life, Jesus said. And next we'll learn that God sent Gabriel to explain the Messiah would arrive based upon having heard this particular prayer for mercy invoking the uh, the rule of mercy from within the Ten Commandments. And, and uh, we'll go to that next. First, let's uh, set up where Gabriel comes into the picture, the angel Gabriel. Daniel uh, 9 verse 21 while I was still in prayer Gabriel the man I had seen in the earlier vision came to me in swift light about the time of the evenings so he's an angel he's able it will fly and Daniel in uh, verse 22 of chapter 9 and 23 he says he Gabriel made me understand speaking with me and saying oh Daniel I have now come out to give you insight and understanding at the beginning of your pleas for mercy a word went out so just when he was pleading for mercy in that moment that's when God was moved. He was he was praying the prayer right out of Exodus 20, 20 verse six, and that motivated God to to come forward. And what he was doing he was actually as a representative of the people was praying for all of the people and and pr pray to repentance for everyone. So uh, again, verse twenty three. At the beginning of your pleas for mercy, a word went out, and I have come to tell it to you 
for you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. Okay, and then next, uh, uh, God commanded Gabriel to tell Daniel he was highly esteemed and that God would send a Messiah who was cut off by the 69th seven of, of years. This is Daniel 9.25. And two, that God will make atonement for iniquity by the 70th seven of years, which is basically... I think any time, as I think I've already explained. Okay, and before we actually read the verses talking about sevens, we need to know about the sevens of Daniel. And basically, uh, the word, here's the quote from uh, Tim LaHaye, Popular Bible Commentary, the word weak, so that's the King James would be translating it, instead of seven, they would translate it as weak. The word weak also means seven, Hebrew Shavua. So basically, the same word for weak is the same word for the number seven. And that means seven of anything, days, months, or years. So that's why you'll read in the King James, it says weeks, and it really should just be, um, you know, if it's 70 times seven or 69 times seven, but you could add years because now we can make that determination. That's likely what was the intention. And before we get into the prophecy, I want to also explain there's, there's something that won't make sense initially, but in in the prophecies of Daniel, there is a period of 62 sevens, there's 69 sevens, and then there's 70 sevens. And uh, what that latter one is, it's not the same as the other two in the sense that 70 times seven is a proverbial number in Judaism. And Jesus even uses it in talking with Peter, that it means an unlimited amount. So it's not a specific number. So if you remember, if you're familiar with this passage, Matthew 18, 21 to 22, Jesus is talking to Peter about forgiveness. And then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. So Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Same thing that's in Daniel. Uh, and that me means when Jesus is instructing Peter, he means it's an unlimited amount. You just forgive as many times as necessary if the person comes to you genuinely asking. So it's a basically a hyper-large number. Jesus meant, in effect, let's not get technical on a fixed number. Instead, it is much as time is necessary. And you'll see why. Okay, so we're going to begin with the uh, first uh, part of it, which is the 70 times 7 provision. So this is, when you hear this, in other words, just realize this can all be completed by the end of time. This is not on a time scale or on a list, but some of them might occur before an indefinite time meaning they, they can happen anytime. Anyway, 77s are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So this 70 times 7 is really an unlimited amount. And uh, what we're going to see is to atone for wickedness could be done anytime earlier than the, this unlimited amount, right? It's not an unlimited amount. So that's there. And to end sin, that's not going to come until we have a new heaven and new earth, right? So these are um, in different timelines, but because it's indefinite, God's not putting any time date stamp on this. Whatever is in here is not a time stamp, in other words. Okay, so um, these are the uh, 69 times 7 provision. That's verse 25. And the 69 times 62 times 7 provision is in verse 26. So let's take a look. And there's different timelines here. No one understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. So at the time he's writing that Jerusalem has been destroyed by the Babylonians. It's in it's in the dirt. It's in the dust. So this, this is a trigger. There's going to be an order at some time in the future when it'll be order rebuilt. From the time the word goes out until the anointed one, Messiah, the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens and 62 sevens. So add seven and 62 and you get 69 times seven. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench put in times of trouble. So that's the 69 times seven provision. Verse 26, after the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be put to death and that's Messiah will be put to death and will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay. And if you didn't know it, after Jesus' death and crucifixion, the, the Romans came and then destroyed 
the city and the sanctuary and the temple in 70 AD. And uh, so this is a this on its face is a uh, very obviously a pre I think a prediction of Yeshua Jesus Christ. Okay, but we're going to have to flesh it out a little bit. So when did the order come to rebuild the uh, city of Jerusalem, which had been destroyed by the Babylonians? That came in uh, 444 BC, and this is right out of the Jewish Encyclopedia of Judaism, 1989 at 520. It says this order went forth in 444 BC when Nehemiah, quote, arrived in Jerusalem in 444 BC with an appointment as governor of Judah, and his first action was to rebuild Jerusalem, including the temple. So this triggers now the timelines. And so just out of curiosity, uh, assuming Daniel was prophesying around 602 BC, but I think it was a little later, it's in the late 500s, but it's, it's a large distance of time, 160 years until this event actually happens. Um, so he's, he's, he's able to see into the future some event and, and uh, that's going to be the trigger, the calculating event for when the Messiah actually comes. Okay, so uh, the Messiah would come and um, appear at the 69 times 7 point. So if you convert, uh, well, first we have to know that Judaism used a calendar of 30 days and uh, a month and 360 days a year. So you have to convert 69 times seven into lunar years. Okay, so that 69 times seven is 483 lunar years. But then you have to convert that into solar years because we are using a solar calendar, which has a 365 day period and then adds some uh, days occasionally. So then if you subtract 476 solar years from 444 BC, so that's the, t the time difference, you would get 32 AD. And if you look, and I do the math there for you, uh, Google calculator, 444 minus 476 comes out to negative 32, which is actually 32 AD. Wikipedia says Jesus' crucifixion took place most likely between 30 and 32 AD. So 32 is right in, right on the money there. And um, so as to this particular fact, it's just amazing that the, the Messiah would come exactly at 32 AD, and well, well, now we have to get into what about him being cut off. So now with the, this background, let's take a look at uh, Daniel 9, 25 and 26 again. So the Messiah in verse 25 is going to come by the 69 times seven period, which is exactly 32 AD. So uh, evidently what this is talking about, he, he would come into the city to uh, for an event what is that event? We're going to find out in 26. So sometime after the 62nd seven, so that would be seven years earlier, so counting from 32 down to 25 AD. So after 25 AD, sometime after, doesn't say how long after, the anointed one, the Messiah, will be put to death. Now we know it happens to be in around 32 AD when he comes into uh, Jerusalem at that uh, at the festival and he's he's executed on a crucifix right so and he'll have nothing the people the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary and we know that happens in 70 AD which is another 38 years later so um, that but that's still prophetic within the prophetic timeline because it only says after a certain time so that's still pr prophetically in Daniel that that's going to happen and you have to realize at the time he's given this prophecy the temple has been the second temple has been completely wiped out by the Babylonians and destroyed and the city so there isn't even a temple to build and then rebuild and have destroyed later yet so he's prophesying that there will actually be a temple uh, re rebuilt which happened and then it's going to be destroyed when the uh, the, the people of a ruler come into that town I'm going to see uh, exactly what that uh, is. It's not the Messiah. It's it's a, a leader of an army is what it says in Hebrew. And we're going to go look at the Israel Bible on that next time. Uh, but anyway, so this is an amazing prophecy. It's uh, squarely appears to to prophesy of Jesus Christ, his, his, his death. 
one thing we need to know is what was the purpose of his death, and that was to do atonement. So let's see how that is prophesied, but in a more uh, unlimited way. Okay, so this the uh, issue of atonement is right here in verse 24. It says 70 sevens, and what we already established that means an unlimited period of time. There's no definition going to be given, no timelines are decreed for your people and your hostility to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and the prophecy, to anoint the whole most holy place. So these are all kinds of end time possibilities that are put in this one basket of 70 times 7, which is an unlimited amount. But one of those did happen. And that was the what, what the Messiah suffered was being cut off, having nothing, right? In the, in the sense that he had he was taken out. <laughs> Uh, but he accomplished God's plan for atonement. So there it is. So these three verses together actually weave together almost an, a perfect picture of, of Jesus Christ and the fall of the sanctuary in 70 AD. So just in conclusion, it's an amazing date-specific prophecy. To me, it's very encouraging as a Christian that we have such a document in history. Uh, Daniel's writing approximately 530 BC by traditional dating uh, methods and at that time the city and the temple are laid in waste he's prophesying of a specific future order that will order to be rebuilt and from that date it will be 69 sevens till the Messiah comes in into Jerusalem into the city uh, presumably and and that exactly fits 32 AD and we know that the Messiah will be cut off sometime after the 62nd week, which is after 25 AD. And exactly it's 32 AD, the same date as he would come or arrive in, uh, in, in Jerusalem in the uh, verse before that. So those all line up. And then you have the prophecy of the uh, army that's going to come and it's going to dest destroy the sanctuary and We'll see more on that detail next time. But that's, um, to me, that's a lot of fulfilled prophecies in, in just a couple of three verses. Very uh, powerful. And really only God could know the or, with the date the order would have went out, 444 BC. That's over 100 years after Daniel uh, is dead. And 444 BC. And, and only God would know when the Messiah would come to Jerusalem. And that would be 32 AD for, for the crucif crucifixion. And um, he, he would also know that he would be uh, executed sometime after 25 AD. And for whatever reason, God wanted to do it that way. He wanted to make these prophecies that way. So anyway, that's the, um, that's the, the wonderful, I think, encouraging message of uh, Daniel. And I hope you could share this with others so that they might be edified by it. And God bless you. Thanks.